friends, I'm Jess, and welcome to the Hex Library, where I post reading, writing, book, and planner-related content a couple of times a week. Today is going to be my book haul for the month of April. As many of you know, I typically do my book haul along with either like the TBR takedown or the balancing the books bingo or whatever this game is that I've been playing for the past, well, this year that it's, it's, it's becoming a hot giant mess. And so what I've decided, I think, um, is that I'm going to just do book hauls when I feel like I have enough books to do a book haul. So like if I just have one for the month, it's just gonna hang out and we'll talk about it when I get to like five or more. Um, today we have five, 10, 15 books to talk about. So I should also mention that we are keeping track of how many books we have on our physical TBR. That's a thing we're doing. So we will talk about how many this adds once we get to the end of the video. We'll talk about that. First, I have the Evernight exclusive edition of Murder Road by Simone St. James. I always wanna say Simone St. Clair. That's not it. Simone St. James. Um, this is a gorgeous edition. I know this book is set like in the 90s. So to have this like comic feel to it with a little bit of throwback is really cute. I dig the spine. I've not heard great things about the book. Um, I did cancel my subscription after I got this book. Well, before I got this book, actually. I canceled, I, I subscribed and then immediately canceled because I wasn't paying attention and didn't realize that the shipping costs more than the book. The book itself was like $18 and the shipping was 25. So that's not a thing that I'm gonna be doing. Either myself, if I enjoy this book, or someone else who may end up with it if I don't enjoy it, we'll get to have this pretty edition. This book follows a newlywed couple, I believe. They are lost on their way, and they are driving down the stretch of highway. They run into a woman who is severely injured. They take her to the local hospital where she then succumbs to her injuries. But on the way there, they were being followed suspiciously or being run down by someone in a vehicle and it turns out that people consider the stretch of highway haunted and there are lots of people that ended up dead there and this is the first time that there's ever been like a witness to the event so then the police think that they're the reason why like they're the suspects which is weird um and then to figure out what's really going on they decide they're gonna have to go back to the haunted road and figure it out which kind of so sounds a little bit like Rules for Vanishing. So I'm intrigued. I've read from this author before. Um, I read, what is the book that I have read by her? Um, the Book of the Cold Cases, and I did like it. It wasn't like a new favorite, but I did enjoy it. So hopefully I enjoy this one as well. Next I have a stack that I got from Amazon, and it is all graphic novels. Uh, the first of which is Heartstopper, Volume 5 by Madame Alice Osman, or Osman. I've always heard Osman, but then I heard someone say Osman the other day, and I went, you know, that makes sense. But I'm just rolling with it. Volume 5, I've read the first four volumes. I hadn't picked this one up yet, and I wanted to read it, so I bought it. Hey, if you don't know what Heartstopper is, it follows two kids, Nick and Charlie. They're in high school. Charlie is gay and out. Nick thinks he's straight. Things don't necessarily go the way Nick had planned. <laughs> um, and it's a romance between Nick and Charlie and about like their relationships, their struggles with just figuring out who they are in the world. This one especially deals with a lot of topics. There are um, earlier books that deal with like eating disorders um, and things like that, as well as bullying and uh, gender identity and your uh, sexual identity. It deals with a lot of that stuff. This one especially deals with making decisions about your future based off of what other people expect of you. And so I feel like this one, even if um, the teens in your life are um, not LGBTQ um, in any way, shape or form, or if they're dating or they're not dating or whatever the case may be, I still think that this could be beneficial to many of the kids in your life. So um, this one, I the series, 
I recommend because it's fantastic, but I also recommend it to anybody who has teenagers to give to their teenagers because there is a lot of really good information in here that I think, I wish there had been something like this. I read this one obviously already, but I wish there had been something like this when I was a senior in high school because I feel like I would have made a lot of different life decisions that could have, I mean, sure, we'll never know. Could have made my life worse, but it also could have made my life better. You know what I mean? One of those. Or it would have not made me feel like I was the only person in the world dealing with those problems. So this one especially. Wish there had been something like this when I was in high school. And because we finished volume 16 of the witch novels last month, I picked up the next three volumes, 17, 18, and 19. Um, and these are the whole arc of uh, part six, which I think says Raggerlang. Raggerlang volumes one, two, and three, which are volumes 17, 18, and 19. Overall, if you don't know what this series is, it is a, I, I think it's supposed to be mid-grade, but these girls all have boyfriends who go to the same school as them and the guys all have facial hair, so I really don't know what is going on with this series, but it was originally from a French author. Um, there was also a TV series at some point, but it basically follows these five teenage girls who use their powers of air, earth, water, fire, and heart or spirit um, to help keep their normal world separate from the other worlds that have magic so that the lands that have magic don't overtake the world without the magic. It's like the most simple explanation ever. Next, from my local indie this month, I got lots of things. I first and foremost got under This Red Rock by Mindy McGinnis. Um, at the beginning of the month, Mindy came in. This was a new release. Um, she was in and we had a book signing and a discussion and I got my book signed. And then after everybody else left, which there was last year when Mindy came, there was like three people, including myself. Um, this year there was, I think, seven or eight, um, but most of them were all from one book club in town that were reading this book for book club. And so they all like bounced immediately. And I stayed um, and talked to Mindy for a little bit along with um, our bookseller, Chelsea, who owns the bookstore. We talked a little bit more about this book in particular because the three of us, oh, well, obviously Mindy has read it because she wrote it, but Chelsea and I both have read the book when the others hadn't read it yet. Um, so we talked more a little in depth about like different things that happened in the book and different plots and things like that. So. That was a wonderful experience getting to sit and talk with her about this book. I loved it, it was fantastic. We'll hear more about that in, I think this is the last book that I read in March. So this should be in March's wrap up, which I will link down below if you wanna know more about this book. Um, but essentially it follows our main character whose name is Neely and she lives with her grandparents, her, father ran away when she was little. Her mother died in a car crash that her and her older brother were in. Um, her brother has recently offed himself off of a bridge and is no longer of the living. And so Neely is doing everything to try to not be a burden to her grandparents because her grandparents have had to like come out of retirement and get jobs to try to help her um, and help raise her. Um, but she has auditory hallucinations and she hears a little girl under her bed. There's a guy in her closet and there's another guy that follows her around and the only thing he says is shitbird. And the only place that she knows of that she doesn't have these hallucinations is when she is in this system of caves or caverns in her local area. So she gets a job there over the summer so that she can be away from these hallucinations. She knows when she's underground, she knows that if she sees or hears something, it is there for real until it's not. There's also um, an incident with one of her friends. This is on the synopsis. This is part of the synopsis of the book, so I don't feel like it's a spoiler. One of her friends that she makes during the caverns um, is brutally murdered and their body is discovered in the caverns. And then Neely has to figure out if she had something to do with that person's murder or not. And it's a very interesting book. So uh, highly, highly, highly recommend Mindy, anything that she's written. Um, but this one particularly was very good. Um, the one that came out last year, A Long Stretch of Bad Days, was also 
very, very good. We then have the fourth book in the Gravekeeper series by Darcy Coates. This is The Hollow Dead. The series follows our main character, Kira, who, when we meet in the first book, she is running for her life from these men, except she has no idea who she is, who they are, or why they're chasing her. Um, she runs to this small town. She ends up at a chapel, some kind of a church, sacristy. Um, is it the actual church or is it the minister, the preacher? I don't know what sect of religion he is, so I can't tell you exactly. Is he a pastor? Is he a preacher? Is he a minister? I don't really know. Uh, but she ends up at his place and uh, he hides her from these people. And then they kind of come to this understanding that, you know, she's welcome to hide there as long as she needs. And she, you know, explains to him that she doesn't really know who she is. And um, they kind of discuss a few things and they find out that Kira is able to see ghosts and kind of interpret what they need as their um, unfinished business to help them cross over. And so the pastor gives her permission to stay at this old cottage where the groundskeeper stayed so long as she helps his parishioners that are no longer living cross over into the afterlife. Again, this is book four. Shit gets deep. I also picked up The Housemaid and The Housemaid's Secret by Freda McFadden. We read The Housemaid. Uh, I don't need this bookmark in here. That's my bookmark from buying the book at the bookstore. Um, we read The Housemaid on Sprints earlier this month and I really enjoyed it. So I wanted to pick up the sequel. I don't know if we were like group reading the sequel. I don't know, is that a thing we're doing? Somebody tell me. Um, <laughs> but I picked up the sequel so that I could continue on because the first book was wild and I'm sure the second book is gonna be wild too. Um, it's not wild in the sense that like things that are happening make no sense and they're completely out of the blue and I had no clue they were going to happen. It's just wild that it's actually happening. Like I can, I can say that this, like it's so fast paced and so much is happening and it's just like all of the wheels are turning and all of the dominoes are falling over and there are some rather shocking things that happen. Not in the sense that you're shocked that it's happened because it's a big twist, but just like, wow, I can't believe somebody would actually do that kind of thing. It was a time and I hope that the second book is also a time. So are they the best written thing ever? No. Are they a good old time? Absolutely. And the last thing that I picked up at the local Endy was this illustrated herbiary. Includes 36 oracle cards, which I didn't even notice that, but they're back here in this back flap. Look at things we just learned together. Um, it has guidance and rituals from 36 Bewitching Botanicals uh, by Maya Toll and illustrated by Kate O'Hara. Uh, mostly, as I have said, I'm trying to be a better kitchen witch, ooh, as I throw things, um, and trying to get a little better at knowing my herbs and what they're good for um, and being able to recognize them by sight. And so this has um, like, giant pictures of like, this is the first one, which is Daisy. Actually, the first one's Chickweed. The second one is Daisy, but it has pictures of it and then tells you a ritual for it and what it's good for, a reflection on that, things that it's used for, things that it's been known to be used for, different plants that it's related to, etc., etc. But the artwork is gorgeous. And so obviously I needed to have that. Um, there is actually, uh, two more from this author, but yeah, I wanted to get this one. So I did. And that was the other thing that I bought at the bookstore. Ta-da. Um, and then yesterday we took my niece shopping for summer clothes and I was like, cool. The mall has a Barnes and Noble. And I don't know if you know this, but I like books. I bought five books at Barnes and Noble. It's a thing I did. Uh, the first uh, is a the Book of Practical Witchcraft, a Compendium of Spells, Rituals, and Occult Knowledge by Pamela Ball. Mostly, I have been looking at this book for ages, and I was like, do you really need another witchcraft book? Because, girl, you've got plenty. <laughs> I've got a whole shelf. Well, actually, most of them are up here. There are some down there, some over there. 
they're a little bit of everywhere if I'm being honest. But you know, it was like, do you really need another one of those? And I was like, mm, I do, uh, because it was on sale for like $15. So yeah, I, I, I mean, we're doing this thing where we're trying to be a better witch and trying to do more studying and, and information and things. And so, so yeah. We needed to have this, obviously. Also, it's pretty. There are other ones in this series as well. And one day I would like to have those as well, but ta-da. Also, speaking of being a good kitchen witch, I also picked up square foot gardening because I didn't really need information about square foot gardening because I'm doing, I'm doing container gardening technically, but in container gardening, they basically tell you that like you can only plant one thing per plant for container, which I know is not true. Um, but since the tops of most of the containers are a foot big, I figured that doing the square foot gardening method would help me figure out what I can plant and how many and where and all of that fun stuff. Because it does like, it does tell you like the kind of things that you can plant next to each other, what plants are like good friends, how many uh, plants you can plant in a square foot, um, what kind of vegetables work well with others and that kind of stuff. So I picked up that as well. There's also information here about how to build your own um, containers and all of that fun stuff. So also picked up that. I then, um, when we were in the children's section with the three-year-old, picked up Empty Smiles by Katherine Arden because this is the fourth book in the Small Spaces series and it is the next one in the series and I haven't read it yet. So picked that up. Uh, this series involves three children who in the first book kind of travel into another version of the world and there is a villain there who tries to turn people into scarecrows, or does turn people into scarecrows, and these three kids have to defeat him and turn all of their school friends back into humans, and the series just kind of goes on from there of these kids making, I don't know if it's a bet or a dare or what exactly it is, but this villain is trying to get their souls and they're all fighting against him, basically. The next book that I picked up that I had was me looking in fantasy going, I want to pick up a book that I've never heard of before. That was kind of my goal because I typically, when I'm at the bookstore, I see things that I have already heard of before or something specifically that I'm looking for. And I was like, I want to just find something I've never heard of before and pick that up. Um, so I ended up with Hounded by Kevin Hearn, which the fact that I've never heard of this is hilarious to me because um, this book came out in like 2011. It was, let me see, yeah, 2011. And this edition came out in 2022. I just read the dedication. It says, look, mom, I made this. Can we put it on the fridge? Anywho, this is the Iron Druid Chronicles. This is book one. There's like 14 books in the series. Um, it follows Atticus, who is the last of the ancient druids. Uh, he's been on the run for more than 2000 years. He's tired of it. The Irish gods who want to kill him are after an enchanted sword he stole in the first century battle. And when they find him managing an occult bookshop in Tempe, Arizona, he doesn't want to uproot his life again. He just wants everything to end one way or another, but preferably the way in which he can continue to enjoy fish and chips, which like, same. He does have some small hope of survival. The Morrigan, the Irish chooser of the slain, is on his side, and so is Brigid, first among the Fae. His lawyer is literally a blood-sucking vampire, and he has a loyal Irish wolfhound with opinions about poodles. That was as far as I made it before I was like, this is the one that's going home with me. There is another paragraph. But he's facing down some mighty enemies. There's a name here that I don't know how to pronounce, but there's a pronunciation guide in the front of the book, so we'll read that later. Um, a vengeful Irish god, plus a coven of witches, and even the local police. On top of all of that, the villain has a direct line to the firepower of hell. Atticus will need all of the luck of the Irish and more if he's going to stay alive. I don't know how I've never heard of this. Maybe it's terrible, but it sounds fantastic. So yeah, I'm gonna be reading these. By these, I mean this, because there's only the one book. Um, I, this, is, this is gonna happen very soon because I need to know if this is gonna be awesome or if it's gonna suck. I have all the questions. Uh, and then there is one more book that I did pick up. My niece said, she is almost 17. She said, if I pick out any book, will you read it? And I said, I mean, 
probably depends on what you pick up. Like, I'll read a little bit of anything. Genre is not like a whole big deal. You find something you think I should read and, and I'll look at it. She brings over The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna, to which I said, does that say World War II on the back of it? Because I'm about 99.9% .9 sure that that is a World War II historical fiction. And she went, I don't know, I just thought the cover was pretty. And I was like, give it here. So I turned it over. It is indeed a World War II historical fiction. And I handed it back to her and I said, let me rephrase. I will read anything that you pick up in this store other than a World War II historical fiction. Uh, I like historical fiction, but I don't do World War II. I was gonna say that there's nothing, I have nothing against World War II, which I technically don't because I feel like we did the right thing. And my point is that that was all we learned about in school from like the time I was in seventh grade until my senior year of high school, every history class we had. We didn't learn about American history. We didn't learn about American government. We didn't learn about nothing except for World War II for five years of my life and six years of my life. It was a long time, okay? And so I don't, I don't read historical fiction about World War II. I can't do it. So uh, she then brought me Screams from the Dark, 29 Tales of Monstrous and the Monstrous, which also was kind of like World War II, if we're being honest, but it is a collection of 29 horror short stories. And this was actually a really perfect pick. I said, that's actually really good because I've been getting more into horror and I don't know which authors to read from in horror. So this is a good way for me to read through some authors and find out, find something I may like and want to read a full novel from. So she did a great job actually after the World War II thing. I'm gonna be 100% honest. The only name that I have heard on this entire thing is Stephen Graham Jones. I've never heard of any of these other people. So it's gonna be a time for me. I mean, I like horror, I like short stories. This may be one that I just read. I mean, there's 29. So this might be a good one to save for October and just read like one a day during the month of October. That's probably what I'll do because otherwise, because I'll never sit down and just read the whole book in one sitting, that would be crazy. And when I listen to audiobooks that are collections of short stories, I get completely lost and I have no idea what's happening. So maybe like a story a day in October would be good. That's probably what will happen with this one. Um, but anywho, that's what that is. So of those books, I will not be counting, as always, anything that is a reference book. So Square Foot Gardening, The Book of Practical Witchcraft, and The Illustrated Herbiary will not be going up against my physical TBR because these are not books that I will ever read cover to cover. They will be um, used for like specific chapters or specific information. I'm never gonna sit and read that whole book in like one sitting or like just the whole thing from one end to the other before picking up something else. So those are what I consider reference books and I don't count reference books against my TBR. Okay, um, of those books, things that I have already read, which also will not be going against my number, which is 42, by the way, in case you didn't know. I probably didn't tell you that. So I have already read The Housemaid, The Hollow Dead, Under This Red Rock, and as previously discussed, Heartstopper, Volume 5. So that means if we account for series, these three books will be one book, the three witch novels, and then we just have Murder Road, Empty Smiles, Hounded, the Housemaid's Secret and Screams from the Dark that are going to be added to the TBR. So that is 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48. So we added six to the number of the TBR. And honestly, that's not that bad for this giant stack of books that I bought. Totally fine with that. As always, on a book haul. If you made it this far in the video, leave me a book stack emoji down below. If you don't wanna miss anything I have going on in the future here in the library, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye.